We've seen gas mask zombies. We've seen statues who move when you blink. But now, get ready for the next best thing from the mind of Stephen Moffat. Shadows. <laughs> The library story from series 4 was one that did not always resonate with me. Yeah, this one, it didn't click with me at the time of broadcast. You have to bear in mind that I was 13 years old at that time. I was not at my full potential yet. I was having a bad time at high school, getting low grades, and I just didn't have any real guidance. I didn't know what direction I was going in. The complexity of this story compared to the others just did not compute with me. The week before, we had a giant wasp. That was kind of neat. Naturally, for a two-parter, this one has a lot to do. There's world-building, new characters, a monster, which, the more I think about it, the more I think it's actually a fascinating concept. In this, the Doctor and Donna get summoned to this futuristic library, which is the biggest in the universe. We meet a bunch of archaeologists, including River Song. It's River who summons the Doctor. From what I know, she pops up a couple of times again. Hell, I even think she got her own spin-off. Damn, this one really must be good. There's all sorts of crazy things going on in this. We have a side story with this little girl who's disturbed by these visions of this library. She keeps seeing it on this TV screen and she keeps getting these visits from this Dr. Moon who is brilliant and he informs her that her world is a lie and that this library that she's seeing is real. We see another world which is almost like heaven and of course we have the whole mystery of Cal. All the while we have skeletons in spacesuits we see these lurk around the library saying the same thing over and over again. This is the first time Doctor Who's ever done anything like this, right? Exterminate! Exterminate! Seriously though, this shit is good. The communicator device repeats each victim's thought pattern as they are about to die. The Vashta Narada appear as shadows that hunt their prey. They are brutal. They devour every bit of flesh that they can find. If you have two shadows, that's it. It's game over. You're dead. From all of that, there's an awful lot to take in. But this story grounds to a halt the light-hearted adventures for the Doctor and Donna. The threat of the Vashta Narada here is real. It's life or death. The fun times of fighting giant wasps in the 1920s are over. This is the real stuff now. The other story elements such as the first meeting of the Doctor and River Song also add so much to this. The entire cast are superb in this but my shout out has to go to Alex Kingston who just nails the part of River Song from the off. Here she is a character who is very familiar with the Doctor but the Doctor doesn't know her. Her multiple Doctor Who appearances since this erred adds so much to this story and, in my opinion, it makes it age like a fine wine, especially the final scenes. Catherine Tate is also a standout in this and gives one of her best ever performances during her time as Donna Noble in Series 4. And this is especially during the simulation scenes in Part 2. Donna gets to have a new life with a husband and children, but they're just part of the simulation. As for David Tennant's 10th Doctor, he is as good as ever here. He's had so much to deal with. He's meeting someone from his own future. He's trying to find out why this planet-sized library has been abandoned for all this time. He deals with the loss of some of the supporting characters. Despite the stakes being much higher than previous Series 4 stories, one thing is very clear in this. The Doctor is still in charge. He might not get all the answers he wants, but he is still the smartest guy in the room. By the end of the story, you feel satisfaction. All of that goes down to Moffat's strong characterization of the 10th Doctor, which is shown through David Tennant's strong performance. My lack of understanding of this back in 2008 
made me go back again and again and again and again and again to the point that I consider this to be one of the best stories in the revived era of Doctor Who. It is not one that you'll get straight away. This requires multiple rewatches. I think this is one that just gets better and better every time you rewatch it. It has so many iconic moments which were echoed in later stories during Stephen Moffat's time as showrunner. I'd like to say that he may have saw this as an achievement of his own, and he would be right. There's parallels with other forms of literature here, like the time traveller's wife, while we're also dealing with imagination and making something else from everyday life become a legit threat. If you're looking for something which is smartly written, well directed and brilliantly acted, then Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead is the Doctor Who story for you.